as well tell Terry now. No time like the present, eh? I'll tell Terry in my own time if you don't mind. Morning. Bit early for you, isn't it? Oh, Thursday. What's your excuse? Off your paper around there. I thought I was the only early bird round here. What's going on? Uh, well, I, I couldn't sleep. I thought I'd open up the shop for you. Oh, I wish you was this keen every morning. Hey, keep the noise down. Some of us need a beauty sleep. But it was one thing, Scott. What's that then? Try putting on some trousers? Yeah. Oh, I might have known. I felt a chill run up my spine, I turn round, and there you are. Just like I always will be, Kim, watching your every move. No, you've got to get your kicks somehow, Chris. This is nothing compared to the thrill I'll get when the judge sentences you and sends you down. I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint you there. Really? Hmm. You see, I was questioned again by the police. They told me I was free to go. That any suspicions they had were groundless. They were terribly civil about it. In fact, Inspector Spaulding even apologised for the inconvenience. When the truth comes out, they'll be less civil, trust me. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh, Chris, but you do realise that you are quite mad. <laughs> we'll see you as the last laugh. So how'd you do on Saturday, then? Oh, I'm thinking of chucking it. Chucking it in? Nah, it's too old, man. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. Hello. What's up with you? You weren't so cool a few hours ago. Quite the opposite, as I remember. That was a few hours ago. You told Terry. Haven't had a chance to yet. You had the perfect opportunity this morning. Are you joking? I couldn't just hurt someone's feelings like that. Yeah, but what about my feelings? I'll tell him when the time is right. Yeah, Scott, you'll chuck us over a couple of Christmas puds, please. Hi, Trisha, love. Scott's here too, is he? Yes, thank you. Trisha can't make up her mind what she wants. Oh, I'm swimming all over for you, innit, eh? <laughs> well, never mind. Take your time, there's no rush. That's where he's wrong. Look, I'm not playing second fiddle to Terry anymore. Right. There are plenty of girls there, and if I turn up at a bar and I find that you haven't told him, well, I'm leaving with someone else. I'll take these papers down to Kim for her signature. Under the circumstances, the less contact you two have, the better. Really? Yes, I heard about your little meeting earlier on. I've told you before, Chris. I know. I'm on a final warning. I will stop, Laura. I promise. Mm, I'm pleased to hear it. When Kim gets her just desserts. <coughs> Hello, Christo. Oh, you do, do you? Yeah, well, I maybe ought to fit you in. Let me see. I'm free later this afternoon, as it happens. Yeah, that'd be fine. I'll see you then. What was that all about? Oh, just some personal business. Nothing for you to worry about. up together. <gasps> Roy! What's happened to you, love? You look as though you've been put through a mangle. You're in a bit of a scrape, weren't you, Roy? Something like that. I'll, uh, see you later. Yeah. Don't forget your bag. But you've still not told me how you've all ended up together. Aren't you going to ask if I had a good time in London, Betty? Weather was good. Marlon, what is going on here? Nothing, Betty. Nothing. Oh, you brought me down here. What's it about? If you're expecting a cake with a file inside, I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint you. 
it wasn't easy for me to call you here, Chris. You'll realize why when you hear what I've got to say. You have my full attention. Go on. It's about Kim. It looks like you were right all along. You don't say. I don't know where to start. Then let me. While you've been in here cooling your heels, you've had time to think. And now you've come to realize the awful truth about your loving wife. Kim's letting you take the rap while she gets away scot-free. That's about it, yes. So why have you got me down here? A shoulder to cry on, or what? Well, I mean, it says it's meant to go that way. It just, just won't fit. What do you reckon? What? You haven't listened to a word I've said, have you? Must have left off your brain in London, mate. It would help if you turned it the right way around. How'd you figure that out? Listen, Ed, I've forgotten more about motors than you'll ever know. Why don't you give us an hand, then? Nah, it's not for me. Lisa, do you reckon you'd let this perfect Zach's van? <laughs> not bloody lightly. It's taken him half an hour to find the right place for the manual. <laughs> hey, you still wait till we get out on the road. There'll be no stopping us. Yeah, you're right. No, oh, those brakes. <laughs> Tell him, Roy. Tell him what? Well, I'm not even sure why we're doing it myself. It's going to take us ages to get this thing up, Rod. Well, then you've got to get it through at MOT. Yeah, and you've got tax and insurance. And don't we think you can leave it around here much longer and make the place look untidy? Well, maybe this isn't such a brilliant idea after all, but I could have told you that before you started. <laughs> there you are. You're my first customer. All oh, right. Well, come on, give us your money then. Money? What for? For your ale. You don't think you're going to sit there all night having drinks on the house? You can't charge him for that. It's all lead. Give over. It'll settle well, that. There. It's on the house. You'll pull a lovely pint, young lady. Better than mine. No, no, love. Just different. I was pulling pints before you were born. That's because you're so much older than me, Betty. Everything all right, ladies? Betty's not quite got the hang of it yet, Grandad. All this newfangled technology, Alan. I'll be fine. I, uh, I would appreciate a little word with you, though, before we get too busy. Yes, Betty, what is it? Well, I feel a few new rules are required around here. Really? Such as? Well, I don't hold with women drinking out of pint glasses for a start. I mean, it's not ladylike, is it? It's just the sort of... And then there's, uh, Trisha's outfit. I don't think it's appropriate showing so much flesh. Scantily clad women and alcohol are a recipe for disaster, if you ask Betty, me. Betty, this is a bar. People come here to forget their troubles, relax and enjoy themselves. And I'm in the business of providing that service. Right, now there's some tables need cleaning. Have you prepared your speech yet? I was going to have a quiet word later. Yeah, well, you'd better. Because otherwise we're finished. Oh, hey, up, mate. Uh, not stopping for the pint? No, I'll be back later. You think you've been pretty clever, piecing together how the robbery was done? I don't think I've done too bad. But you haven't nailed Kim yet. I'm working on it. It's a matter of time. Time is not on your side, Chris. She has the money, remember? She could do a runner at any time. And? I can help you. I know all the missing pieces to the puzzle. <laughs> What's your suggestion, a partnership? You're the only other person who knows Kim's guilty. I'm the only one that can prove it. What do you say? You want us to join forces to bring down Kim? Something like that. You've waited long enough for your chance, Chris. You may never get another one. Remember, she still has all the money. Enough for a pretty fast getaway. 
Okay. You've got a partner. On one condition. Well, I'm hardly in a position to refuse. What is it? You tell me every detail of the robbery, regardless of how much it incriminates you. Okay. I've nothing to lose. Right. Let's get to work then, shall we? Partner. Feels good, doesn't it? What? You and I being back together. Working behind the bar. Yeah. I reckon it's a bit crowded back here, though. Yeah, listen, uh, there's something I want to speak to you about later on. Yeah, me too. Have you taken leave of your senses? Mm -hmm. Firstly, I ask for a single malt, and this is very clearly a sherry. Mm -hmm. And then I give you a ten-pound note, and you're giving me two pounds, forty-five pence change, and now you're taking away my glass before I've had a chance to drink it! From the way you're behaving, you've had enough already. Uh, is everything all right? Yeah, it's fine, Alan. Fine. <laughs> fine? You swindle me and you leave me thirsty. That's your idea of fine? Uh, Betty, I'll take over here. The, the glass isn't me collecting. All right, Alan. No, you'll have to go over it again. You haven't told me a single thing that Kim simply couldn't deny it, but your word against hers. I told you exactly what happened. Well, tell me again. There must be some little detail that you missed out. OK, one more time. I contacted a woman called Dixon who handles stolen thoroughbreds. She said she would take Orsino off our hands. Well, yeah, go on. On the day of the robbery, Kim painted one of the stable horses to make it look like Orsino. Very artistic. That was her idea. Then she brought out the real Orsino to you during the day for the handover with Dixon. She put the painted stable horse back in the stalls to buy us more time. Then you faked the robbery at night, though Orsino was long gone. Right. This is going to be a very short-lived partnership, Steve. Apart from the involvement of this woman, Dixon, and painting the horse, I knew all that already. Come back to the Dixon woman later. Let's just go over what happened on the night of the fake robbery. Right. There you go. Oh, the end of a busy day. I'm having a drink. Would you like one? Oh. Why not? Uh, I have a brandy, thanks. You know, the atmosphere's so much better when Christopher isn't haunting the place. Where is he, by the way? Mm, out. He had an appointment. Well, let's hope it's a long meeting. Oh. Thanks. You know, it's strange to think that not that long ago this was my home. Frank and I used to sit in here some evenings, unwind after a You've been through a lot recently. I have to admit, though, you cope with your crisis very well. well. It has been hard, but it'll be a lot easier now the police know I'm innocent. Well, here's to a happier future. Yeah. So, it looks like Kim planned the perfect crime after all. Yeah, until she ruined it herself. Well, what do you mean? Well, everything was going like clockwork. I was on my way home, almost in the clear. And then she made that stupid phone call. Phone call? Explain. Kim and Zoe were in the cottage playing with James while I was supposed to be upstairs making phone calls. While you were actually committing the fake robbery? Right. Then out of the blue, Ashley turns up wanting to know something about the phone run. And? Kim panicked and called me on my mobile. As I was answering, I took my eye off the road for a moment. And that's when I hit Kathy. She appeared out of nowhere. It was an accident. Kim called you in the middle of the robbery? Yeah, that's right. I see. Well, well, well. Have you given any thought to your long-term future? After Steve's convicted, you mean? I suppose. Sorry, I didn't mean to pry. Oh. Well, with a lot of hard work, I can restore the studs' reputation. After that... Who knows? So you'll be staying on? Oh, why shouldn't I? What little I have left is here. I just hope Chris can put all this behind him. We can establish some kind of working relationship. Well, you certainly have guts. I'll give you that. All I know is whatever life throws at me, somehow I managed to cope. <laughs> so, Kim completely blew it. She panicked and called you about Ashley's fun run? Yeah. 
What? As far as I'm concerned, the fun's about to begin. Don't you see? The call she made will be logged by the phone company. The time it was made and who it was made to. Why would Kim call you on your mobile if she thought you were upstairs? Well, she wouldn't. Unless she knew you weren't in the house. That phone bill will be in the office. Kim's mobile's paid for by Home Farm. All I have to do is find it. And we'll have the evidence we need. Of course. Partner. Evening. Right, young man. What can I get you? I think Trisha should serve me better. It's all right, Betty. I'll get this. Yeah, well, I beat you to it, didn't I? Now, do you want serving or not? All right. Yeah, I'd like uh, two pints of lager, one with a lemonade top, a pint of premium lager, half a dry cider, a mild and a bitter, two packets of cheese and onion, three packets of smoky bacon, and some of those cheesy whatnots. Thanks. Right. That's two half pints of lager, half a pint of mild and... Why don't you serve Ashley, Betty? Well, if you're sure you can manage. You're evil, you are. Just one pint of lager, please. Are you still smiling? I take it you haven't told him yet. You did say it till the end of the night. Well, it's not the end of the night yet. What did you say it were called? A St Clement's, Betty. A St Clement's. I'm just so last one. Just give me half a shandy, Betty. Can we have that word after closing? I'll get rid of Val and uh, I might have a bit of privacy. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. So, what went off in London then? Not much. I know you the good hiding. Some bloke in a club. More fancy to him last and it all picked off. <laughs> you didn't see any trace of Oakwell then? Ah, London's a big city, innit? As uh, Will told you about car. No, I won't care. Me and Roy, we've bought this motor. I mean, it's a bit of a scrap heap at the moment. Got big plans for it, though. Grandad, I don't think it's quite working out with Betty. Is that a pint? Right. Had enough of your cheek. You're bad. Yeah. I'm going to have to do something about this. I'll make a few phone calls. So I said to him, in my most formal legal manner, well, sir, if I were to do that, it would redefine the whole area of lawyer-client privilege. <laughs> <laughs> What's the joke? Oh, you wouldn't get it, Chris. <clears throat> you need a sense of humour. How was your meeting? Oh, someone wanted to talk to me about a business proposition, a sort of joint venture. Only it turns out I don't need them. No, well, lucky escape for someone. No, I don't think so, Summer. Well, I've got to pick James up from Zoe's. Good night, Laura. You two are getting a bit cosy, aren't you? Just trying to maintain a good working relationship. Of course. Right, I've got some work to finish. I'll see you in the morning. Now, Betty, where are you going? Your shift's not over yet. Oh, no, I've got to get home. Get Seth, this go, go. Betty. Uh, Trish, I, I think Betty's done more than enough, don't you? Uh, I, I've been thinking, Betty, it's, it's very unfair of us to take advantage of your good nature. You are? Well, these hours are completely unsuitable for your domestic arrangements, and I know how hard you work at the diner. What, what are you trying to say, Alan? Uh, Seth misses you. He told me so. I see more of him here. It will, nevertheless, I, I've decided to engage a temporary barmaid from Leeds. In other words, he's letting you go, Betty? No, not so. We, we still need Betty's services, but in a totally different capacity. Yeah, what that all means is, uh, well, we'll be dependent on you to uh, put the new girl up, take her under your wing. Yes, yeah, so you know we haven't any room at the Woolpack, and, and you'll get more in rent than you do for your shifts here. Oh, all right, then. You pick the right person. <laughs> well, better get Seth home. Let's have your glasses, please. 
Look, I'll tell you what, Al. Why don't you let Trisha and I finish off? Uh, you go away, Ali. Certainly would mind. I'm worn out. Well, off you go, then. Are you sure you don't mind? Absolutely. Oh, and uh, Al. It's nice to be back. Trish, leave those. We can finish up later. But we really have to get this done, Terry. No. We need to talk. So, what's on your mind? You are. Night and day. I can't think of anything else. Terry, if I No, can... no, no. Let me finish. I know that going to Dundee, uh, well, it would have been a big step for you. Uh, and I know that that kind of commitment takes time. Terry. No, I, I know that you didn't want to leave Al after you just found him. That was part of it. Trisha, but... please. I've got to get this out. I think I'm in love with you. And I know you feel something for me. I'll tell you what she feels for you, Terry. Pity. Scott. Uh, we're closed. How... This is a private conversation. Scott, don't. Either you tell him or I will. Trisha, tell me what? Look, Terry, this isn't easy for me. Isn't it? It seems pretty easy to me. You see, the thing is, Trisha and I have been seeing each other. Scott, please. She's been in and out of my bed now for, well, for weeks. Been having a good time. Been having a really good laugh at you. In fact, she had only just left me when I saw you this morning. Uh, Trisha, <laughs> tell me he's making it up. Well, tell me he's making it up. How could you think? that Trisha could fancy someone like you. At least when you had to fling on my mother, you picked up someone your own age. <laughs> Did you have no idea how stupid you looked? Going after someone you, who's young enough to be your own daughter. You only got your job back here because... because she felt sorry for you. Please don't. Uh, Trisha? Tell me he's lying. You got your answer. 